Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's follow together. Today I'm doing part five of a series on the person of the Holy Spirit and Him at work within a believer's lives, within our lives. Amen. Blessed be God's name forever and always. Amen. Number five. Excuse me, let's do a recap. Sorry, I'm rusty at this. One, the spirit of adoption. God adopting us as his kids for his glory, as his kids for his glory, through the finished work of Jesus. When you put your faith in him by hearing the word, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. The spirit of adoption, number one. Number two, the spirit of holiness. The spirit that sets us apart as God's kids to live a different life, to live as God's people for his glory, him at work within us. Number three, the spirit of truth. Jesus said that he would give us another helper, the advocate, the spirit of truth. And it's in God's light that we see light. It's in his truth that we can begin to know truth and follow the truth. Why? Because the truth sets the captives free. Amen. Why? Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. So we are free in Christ. And that's not to use that freedom as a cover-up to do evil, but to live set apart by his truth and follow him in all things. Deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. Number four, the spirit of help. And we can we can follow him because he's faithful to stick with us. I love Matthew eleven, twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Amen. So it's that yoke, that fellowship. We're alive because God's presence within our lives. And it leads me into five, the spirit of power. Timothy, excuse me, Paul wrote this to Timothy. In 2 Timothy 1 through 7, he says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Some versions say self-control. Sound mind, self-control. All right? God has not given you that spirit of fear, but of power. Now, in the book of Acts, I believe it's chapter 8, there's a guy named Simon the Sorcerer, right? He was doing these, like, signs and, and making money. And he heard the, about Jesus, and he believed, and he's like, man, I want this Holy Spirit, because he saw John and Peter doing miracles in Jesus' name, and he saw God's power with them at work, testifying. And he said, I want that, right? I want that. What can I give you for? Let me buy it off you. Like the Holy Spirit was a thing. No, he's a person. God's presence with us, right? Jesus said he would live with you and in you. But that power is to live a different life as God's people, right? I, I love Ephesians 3. It says that Paul prays that you would have power to know God's love. We need his power even to grasp his love, right? He says how high, how how wide, how deep is the love of God that surpasses all understanding his power at work in us and Simon wanted to buy it because he wanted to use it for himself but this power is to live a different life to follow Jesus Philippians 4 13 right I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me it's him who strengthens me and that's not to, so you can do an awesome bench press now you should you should pray before you do a bench press right so it doesn't land on you but I was, I was kind of joking there, all right? Don't get offended by it, but uh, I make mistakes too. Amen, I need his grace. It's his power at work in our lives to live a, a life holy and pleasing unto the Lord in all things and all that we do. Why is we seek his kingdom first? Why? Because he reigns. Why? Because he is good. He reigns even if he wasn't good, but he's great. So great. And then it's his goodness that leads us to repentance that turns us from our wicked ways to the living God. Why? Because he shed his blood of his son, the innocent for the uninnocent, the innocent for the guilty, us. Amen.
zoom in. The Lord had given them the Holy Spirit, and he wanted it for himself to use for his own advantage. But God's power is meant to bear witness to the world of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And at first, inwardly, or I shouldn't say at first, as well as inwardly in a believer by bearing fruit. What do I mean by fruit? In Galatians it says this, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law, but those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, since we live by the Spirit He's given us, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Galatians 5, 22 through 26. God's power at work in our lives. Secondly, He bears witness with signs and miracles. Now, there is many who, who push this so far and excuse us and excuse the message. And then there's others that are over here saying, well, that's done. And I don't see that. I see God's power at work in our lives. Although we live by faith, not by sight. But God's power is at work in his people. You best believe it. Why? Because our God's not dead. He's alive. As Newsboy said, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. I like that one hymn that says, You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Man, if it wasn't for Jesus, I feel like I'm getting off topic because I need to talk about the Holy Spirit. But, but man, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I would not be here today. His resurrection power at work in my life, his, his freedom and forgiveness and redemption found only in Christ is, is why this poor man is rich today. And I ain't talking about rich. And that's why a lot of the people were trying to use these spiritual gifts to make some money. And that's evil and vile thing. That's messed up. And they're going to have to answer for it. So, Man, if you feel like they're doing, they're after that, you should probably just come back to Jesus and, and the people in your local church that he's set there for a reason. And they have to answer for that. So pray for them. Pray for me too. Amen. Getting off topic a little bit. Sorry about that. But uh, the spirit of power and that power is at work in our lives. So we could be God set apart people like I've talked about before. If you haven't seen those other videos... I would encourage you to, to look them up. I'll try to get uh, my wife to put the link in the description below. Love you, honey. You're amazing. Couldn't do this without you. Shout out to you. You you are a helper. You are just amazing, and I'm thankful to God for you. Anyway, spirit of adoption, number one. Spirit of holiness, number two. Spirit of truth, number three. This is my list. Spirit of help. Because man, without his help, we'd be sunk. Amen. Number four. And number five, his spirit of power. His spirit of power at work in us. And it does bear witness through signs and miracles. Paul wrote about, man, accepting the message because of the spirit's power at work, right? Now, we shouldn't just chase signs and wonders. But man, when you live a life with Jesus, when your eyes are open, when... He makes the, the eyes of your heart open to his glory and grace. Man, you can't help but see some of that. Amen. And it's not because we're super awesome. It's because of his grace. And he's given gifts of his spirit to his people to help his people. Amen. To encourage and to equip. So his power, the spirit of power at work in believers to bear fruit, to be a witness unto him. And... Uh, in the world around us, that our God reigns and he is alive. Amen. Be blessed.